everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're going to talk about genocide. So today is Thursday, February 18th. About two days ago, uh, President Biden gave this uh, town hall, and in that he said this. You know, Chinese leaders, if you know anything about Chinese history, it has always been the time when China has been victimized by the outer world is when they haven't been unified at home. So the central, oh, to vastly overstated, the central principle of Xi Jinping is that there must be a united, tightly controlled China. And he uses his rationale for the things he does based on that. I point out to him, no American president can be sustained as a president if he doesn't reflect the values of the United States. And so the idea, I'm not going to speak out against what he's doing in Hong Kong, what he's doing with the Uyghurs in western mountains of, of uh, China and Taiwan trying to end the one China policy by making it forceful. I, I said, and by the way, he said he, he gets it. Culturally, there are different norms at each country, and they, their leaders are expected to follow. So if that doesn't concern you at all, let me tell you why it should. Uh, first of all, he is talking about the, the I think it's pronounced Uyghur, the, the Uyghur people in China, which is a, a people group within China. Often, in case you don't know this, uh, China is actually extremely ethnically diverse. Um, there's a lot of different minorities in China, but the Chinese government just kind of suppresses it and just says, you know, we're all, we're all Han Chinese, which, which is not even close to true, by the way. So this is a, a people group in China. Uh, that are predominantly Muslim, that right now are being sent to camps. Like, it, it's, this is documented, this is a thing. I'm going to link a BBC article uh, below here, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But it, it, it's, it's a thing. It's a documented thing that they are openly persecuting the Uyghur people and putting them into re-education camps. Okay? Classic communist stuff. Uh, and among the things going on in these camps are potential genocide, although I haven't seen any confirmed reports about that, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. Uh, and then we have seen confirmed reports of, you know, rapes, like systematic rape that is occurring in these camps. Everything you think about, you know, the, the evils of when government starts putting people in camps, that's what's happening here. If the President of the United States is afraid to speak out against a government that rounds people up, puts them in camps, and then has women raped because, you know, cultural differences. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. If you're on board with that, if you're like, ah, oh, well, what's the big deal? I don't really have a word for you on that. Uh, that, to me, seems pretty self-explanatory. You know, everybody gives Will Chamberlain, who was the PM of uh, England right before World War II, crap for coming back and negotiating with Hitler, right? Oh, what an idiot. He negotiated with Hitler. He thought he could be peaceful with Hitler. He thought Hitler would listen. What a moron. That's what this is. Only worse. This is like looking over and be like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's cultural differences. You know, if he wants to round people up and, and put them in camps, I mean, what's, what's the problem? It's, the, it's literally the same thing. You show me the difference there. You show me the difference b between having praised Hitler for putting people in camps and then praising uh, China for putting people in camps. They're both putting people in camps that are ethnic minorities. It's disgusting. And the fact that a president isn't willing to stand up for that is a big problem. He also mentions Hong Kong. I'm sure we all remember the, the issues with Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong went back to China and uh, it was supposed to remain its kind of its own thing for about 50 years, but that lasted less than 50 days before China started moving in and, and is now folding them into the Chinese system and how things are going to work and establishing communist rule and wiping out freedom of speech and on and on and on. So, okay, if you're an American watching this video, why should you care? We should be like, well, why should I care that the president... Because the same government that is okay, the, the same president that is okay with some other government putting people in camps now wants you to surrender your guns. Right? I still have it from the last video I did. Here's HR 127, which I have another video on that. If you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and watch it. One of the most egregious gun control bills in the history of America is now up right now. And the Democrats control the House, the Senate, and the White House. And you better believe they're going to try to pass some kind of gun legislation. So the government that's okay with putting people in camps wants me to surrender my right to protect myself from going into a camp to them. 
I, again, if you don't see the problem with that, if that if the, if you don't that doesn't inherently ring a red flag in your head, I'm not sure what to tell you. That that should be a danger warning sign. So you have some choices to make, and they're going to come to you very soon. So put your big boy pants on. Uh, if a government wants to disarm you and is cool with putting people in camps because of whatever reason, that should terrify you. That should terrify you. And you should start thinking about the choices you're going to make if those things come down the pipe. Because the more and more I think about it, I don't, I don't see how it's not going to come down the pipe. I don't see how the same president that is totally cool with some other government putting their own people in camps and having systematic rapes and doing all this other horrible, horrible stuff, how that president now thinks that I should turn my gun over to him for safety. That's terrifying. And for anyone who still would say, oh, that could never happen in America, that won't happen, you're crazy, you're paranoid, I would just tell you to read a history book. People are people. People will do the same thing. I don't care what culture you're from. I don't care what time period you're from. People are inherently sinful and do inherently bad things. And when anybody from any time period in any culture in history has too much power, it goes bad. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. There's a reason we have that maxim, okay? I'm afraid for the future of this country. I'm afraid for how bad things are gonna get. Nobody wants them to actually get that bad. But you have a government run by people who don't think you have rights and want you to surrender all of them to them so that they can keep you safe. Again, if you look at a simple survey of history, that never works out. Ever. Do brave deeds and endure.